Okay, so there's a lovely lady who is doing a, I don't want to say a challenge, but kind of a giveaway on one of her channels. I will link her video in the comments below or in the description box below. And if you make a tag, you can be entered to win the journal. And I seen the journal and just from seeing a photo of it off of the little thumb tab uh, or the thumbnails and it's a really pretty journal. Um, I would probably really add it to my collection, but I thought it would just be really fun to do the tag. Um, if I win the journal, awesome, but I like, I, I just love crafting, so we'll see what comes of it. And I've been wanting to do an upcycled, uh, style tag or upcycled pretty much anything. I love upcycling stuff. And one of my friends gave me this Rock and Roll Hall of Fame tag. I guess it came off of one of her t-shirts. And that is what we are going to upcycle into a tag today. So let's get started. So it has been a while since I've done an official vintage piece. And I decided today I wanted to do something with my Paris stamp. It has been a little while since I used it. So I got these two pieces of paper from a vintage book that I deconstructed. If you're interested, I do have a video on how to do that. Uh, this is an old Avon box. I love the lambs and I have two of them. So I'm going to save them one for a really special project, but I think I'm going to throw one into this little tag. And I've been wanting to use some of this gold. Uh, I can't remember what's the last project I used it on, but I haven't used too much of it. So today we are going to use some I used this in my um, altered paper clips from yesterday and some archival ink. So if you guys want to make something similar, these are some of the basic products that I'm using to start off with. Now I'm going to take my Paris stamp. You don't have to press too hard on it because then it'll end up on the ridges. Um, I used to think that when I first started, if you press as hard as you can and use as much ink as you can, that it would come out better. Yeah, no, just tap it a couple of times. It'll come out just as good as if you put all of your weight on it and end up with ink in the grooves. Oh, well, that one came out terrible. So, <laughs> right, as, as that one comes out terrible, I think it's because I have some... Yeah, it's because I have that tape on my table. I really need to get that finished. I'm going to stand up and put a little bit more weight on the ink or on the block. And there we are. Much better. Okay. Now I'm just going to probably turn on some light here. I got to keep remembering to do that. I'm, I'm horrible. <laughs> kind of wish I had a little place where you guys could be like, hey, turn on your lights. It's dark in there. All right. Now I'm just using my lights here so I can line up my Paris stamp. You're all like, Pro you probably should have glued it first. Well, sometimes I have my moments. Then maybe I I probably should have brought it down a little bit more because I really don't like that spot right there with no writing. But that is okay. Now I have Fabri-Tac. Um, it is a pretty expensive glue, especially for those of you who are just starting out. But I like the fact that it sticks and it stays. So you could use a glue stick if you wish. Uh, um... What other types? Elmer's glue, I guess, would be okay. I would be careful on the Elmer's glue and make sure that you get, um, because they have just the basic, basic Elmer's glue, but they also have, like, the stuff for photos and the acid-free stuff for kind of archival-style projects, because if you just go and buy some regular, just some basic, basic glue, the acidity in it may also degrade your products 
Because I remember when I was big into scrapbooking, that was a big no-no. You had to be careful on what kind of glue you bought. Especially mounting your photos. Because a lot of vintage photos, you want them to last. Especially if they're family heirlooms. Ooh, perfect. Right on the dot. Alright, let's trim this baby out and I will come back to you. So I really love how this came out. I mean, literally, the Paris stamp fit perfectly. So now I think I'm just going to glue this on the back side. You don't need too, too much glue. Just make sure it sticks a little bit in the middle and move your glue out to the edges. I like moving it out to the edges. That way my paper doesn't um, isn't loose and you can snag it on something and tear off your paper and then it, it really doesn't look very pretty. I like that side better. So we're just gonna center this the best we can and press it down. There and see it. I made sure to push all the glue towards the edges. Oh, see right there, I didn't. Terrible, terrible, terrible. There, good as new. All right, I got this glue on my fingers. If you guys have this problem, just rub it, comes right off really easy. All right, I will trim this out again and be back to you. All righty, all basted up and ready to go. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little in love. I think I'm gonna have to make myself one to go in my Paris journal I did a while back. Um, it is on my channel. If you go into all my junk journals, it's in there. Um, I'll try to remember to link it on this page too. Considering it's a Paris themed project, I will probably remember. <laughs> Okay, so I have this really pretty lace and I want to um, use it as kind of a band. The one thing you have to remember, because I'm going to sew on this. So depending on your sewing machine, you can't add too many layers. Otherwise, it's going to get jammed up in your sewing machine as well. If you're going to sew on it, Fabri-Tac is probably your best bet because in a sewing machine, it can stitch through it. A lot of other glues your sewing machine cannot stitch through. Especially hot glue gun. Trust me, I've tried it bad. Um, so I'm going to layer some lace and a few other things. And I want to be sure that my machine can sew through it when I am finished. And I don't think I want that on the... But I do want... Yes. I want some of that along the bottom. I'm liking that. Just trim off these. And see you got the designs on the front and it's flat on the back. That back side is where we're going to glue and stick it to our um, tag. There we are. I'm just lining up the bottom of the stitch on the um, tassel and pushing it right into place. The good thing about this Fabri-Tac is it actually tacks into place and dries fairly quickly compared to a lot of other glues I have worked with. And trust me, I've worked with a lot of glues. And Gorilla Glue, it's an amazing glue, but it takes forever to dry. And man, don't ever get that stuff on your skin. It is terrible. Okay, I think the front is almost finished. I feel like it needs something else. But that'll be a sort of an embellishment feature towards the end of the video. So let's jump on over to the back here. 
Um, I love this lace, so I definitely want some of it. I'm just going to straighten it out some. And this is some upcycled lace. Uh, my mother gave it to me. I am not sure what she got it off of, but I know it came off of something and it was probably clothes or clothing oriented. So keep that in mind when you're looking for lace because everyone knows lace can be very expensive. And save your scraps. They work great for snippet rolls. All right, that's the perfect size. Now I think I want one of these. I'm liking the squiggly. I gotta find the end of it. Do do do. Oh, that looks like it's it. There we go. Yes, I like the squiggly. Okay, let's measure it out. Snip, snip. I think that's all the gold we will be adding. And I'm going to cut apart this little box. I've, I'm going to save these two. They're just too pretty not to save. Um, the, the Avon spots, a lot of people like Avon. So if you do have these, keep that in mind. Someone may love it as well. It's a junk journal. Someone just may love it anyway because it's really pretty. I'm actually going to fix this little spot right here. I want to save that. Now it's glued to my finger. My bad. <laughs> there we are. Good as new. Okay. So I'm going to cut this apart and I will be back to you. Okay. So I cut the box out and these are all the wonderful pieces I got off of it. Um, they will be great for other projects. This one, however, is going to go on to this one. If you are really exceptionally creative, I'm sure you can figure out something to do with these. I, however, am not. So these will probably go in the garbage. I mean, I, I'm pretty creative. But people give me a lot more credit sometimes than I deserve. But I think that's about, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll try some mixed media later on down the road and I'll save those for that. All right. Now, I actually am going to grab a stamp for this that I just thought of. So I'll be right back. So this is how I kind of organize my clean stamps. It was a photo box from Michaels and they fit perfect. And I just put, um, like this one has all my spring stuff and I have another one that has a mermaid clean stamp in it. It's literally the only stamp in it, but it still works. They work great. So I already know which stamp I'm going to use and it is going to be this little flower. That's it right there. Set that aside. I want to put it on the top. Alrighty. Ooh, I think this is going to be so cute. What do you guys think about, I think I'm going to add one of these ribbons. That would tie it in with the Paris or the gold really well, I think. Yes, I am going to do that. I have just decided. All right. See, really easy to put away, too. Very convenient. All right. Uh, let me grab the gold. Silly me, it was sitting right here. Yes. Oh, my. That is going to be pretty. Okay. Trim it up, and I'm probably going to use Fabri-Tac on this. Um, I feel like is it this one? Yes, yeah, this one. It's a little crooked. I want to straighten it up a little bit. Um, I just like the way the Fabri-Tac sits with a lot of this stuff. It holds it and bonds it really well. I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to stitch around the 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 lamb or not, but I am going to stitch around the bigger tag. There we are. Okay, I want to add a little bit of paper. I love that, it is so cute. So I want to add a little bit of paper on the bottom here so I can have a tuck spot. So I'm gonna go dig through my papers and I will be right back. 
So I've decided on my paper, but it is super thin and I don't like how thin it is for going to be a pocket. So I grabbed myself a piece of cardstock that I use for reinforcing some of my paper. And we're just going to take it and measure out, excuse me, our pocket here. And just trim it up. You can use a pen and draw the line and then trim it, but this is quick and easy for me. Just hold it up, cut it off, keep on jerking. All right. Now let's see. I like how there's a small pattern here, but I think I'm kind of in love with that section right there. So I'm going to do the best I can to line it up really nice like. There we are. My bad. Dropping things and things. And we're just going to smooth out the glue again. And if you're allergic to this glue, I would get an old credit card, something along those lines. That way you don't have it touching your skin. Maybe like a miniature craft spatula. I know they have some of those. Um, I actually, I found my spatula. If some of you have seen my texture paste video. I got my spatula at Goodwill and it's like a work, like man's work style spatula. But hey, it works perfect. And after I'm done with this piece of paper, it's going to go in my Franken page pile. How many of you have a Franken page pile? I know I do. It is this, um, big, huge, oh, I don't want to say huge, but it's this plastic crate. And it's probably about this big and about that deep. And I keep throwing Franken stuff in there, fully intending on building Franken pages. And I never get around to it. It is terrible. So now I have this big, huge pile of paper. I think one day I'm just going to have a Franken page fest and sit and do nothing but make Franken pages. Oh my, look how pretty I am. Oh, and I'm glad I got that little piece right there. I love it. Love, love, love. Okay. Um, before I mount this to that... Ooh, um, I think, no, I think it'll be fine. I may not even use the sewing machine. I am going to glue down this lace. Just kind of eye it. It doesn't have to be perfect unless, you know, you want it to be then make it perfect by all means but as long as it goes on and it looks pretty and it's not gonna fall apart it doesn't have to be perfect I mean artists weren't perfect as a matter of fact anything art oriented is never symmetrically symmetrically officially perfect if it's natural and a little line around the edge. Oh, I knew I, that's okay. I can glue it on right now. And we're just going to glue you right on down. I love it. It is so pretty. Very vintagey. Very, very vintagey. And oh, yes, that'll be perfect just to pull some color up from the bottom with all that attention going on down here. So this little accent of gold. I miss, I uh, actually haven't done anything Paris oriented in a while. So I miss working with some Paris stuff. And if anyone knows me, I'm, I'm like obsessed with Paris. Everything in my house is Paris. I'm sure some of you have heard this before and you're like, God, oh my goodness. Shush about Paris. Sorry, I, I just, 
I will go there and visit one day. It will happen. Okay. And it's probably not going to fit, right? Knowing my look. Yes. Yeah, but it, it can still be stuffed in there perfectly. Um, maybe I'll put an elastic band right here and I can just slip it inside the elastic band. Um, I think I will do that. And then I'll add like a little a little note inside here for the recipient of this beautiful little tag. All right, I am going to go sew around the edges. When I do, I'm going to probably lay down the elastic strip that this will go in. Um, I don't really want to glue it down and risk it being, uh, this not being able to fit because it's too close or something like that. So I'm going to go sew around these edges. If you don't know how to sew on ephemera, check out my sew on ephemera video so you can learn. And I will be right back to show you probably the finished product. Okay, so it kind of worked out perfect. I had gold thread in the sewing machine. So it lined up really nicely and matched this perfectly. I want to see if this little lamb will now fit. Oh yes, perfect. Good, good. I love it. So cute. But in my bobbin case, all I had was white thread and I wasn't going to take the time to spend at least 15 minutes spooling some gold thread. So I came up with a faster ingenious idea and decided that I was going to distress the edge of the tag with the writing. Here is my wonderful distressing tool that I made. Some of you may have seen the video. Ow! Take that out. Um, let's get some distressing going on. Now we have to make sure and distress the thread too. So we don't want it to be white. I mean, if you want it to be white, that's perfectly fine. But I don't want mine to be white. Try and get it to focus. some light going on over here. Oh yes. I actually really like how the distressing is coming out. Coming out very nice. And you can buy the distressing pads for I think like two or three dollars and if you use a coupon you can get them for really cheap wow i love the way that came out now i'm not going to distress around here but i am going to distress around the wording i'm going to try and keep it off the gold thread too wow what do you guys think i think it just adds that that kind of a finishing touch. I'm in love. All right, now that that's done, uh, I turned on the hot glue gun and let it warm up because while I was digging, I found these precious little pieces and I wanted to add them. So we are gonna go ahead and do that. Of course, you got our hot glue gun cobwebs. I'm just gonna lightly glue the back of this I like the hot glue gun better for some of these um, bigger accents like this because I want them to stay in place. And after you're done sewing, it doesn't matter if you use the hot glue gun anyway. I kind of like that thing on top of the eye. It's kind of like a flower dot. Oh, yes. Now I'm going to do a very light line on our little petals here. You don't want to over glue it and have it seep through everywhere. I mean, if you do, fine by me. You're more than welcome to. But I I don't like that, so I just very lightly glue it. Wow, that is so pretty. That was kind of the finishing touch I was going for. And I also wanted to add this button. So, now we will need a pretty bigger hot glue gun or uh, hot glue dab for that one. So just a nice little dab, take our button and push it right into place. Yes, 
That is so pretty. I love the front. It's exactly what I was going for. I was thinking a silver piece, but I'm really liking this much better instead. All right, and on the back, I grabbed these as well. I want to put... Mm, I was thinking about right here. I think that's good. Get some hot glue here. If it's not, well, then I guess I'll just have to live with it, won't I? Oh, yes. I like it. And I'm thinking that the, the little whatchamacallit will be fine on there. Make sure you can still lift this up after you get done gluing it. That's kind of why I'm gluing on the lighter side, too, is you got some other parts that you still want to move around. Perfect. Oop, that came up. I think I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue just to fix that. Just a little bit. Very itty bitty bit. That way you can press into place and wipe off the excess. Be careful with the hot glue gun. I've said it time and time again. Hot. Very, very hot. Alright. Now we got our little flower pieces that we need to go in place. Just lightly glue them. Don't have to go too crazy with it. A little bit goes a long way in this case. Ah, perfect. All right. And I grabbed a few buttons for this piece too. Now where did, oh, here they are. Well, I want to see if the lamb fits before I throw the buttons on. Oh, yes, she fits elegantly. I don't even think this needs buttons, but I still feel like I want it to have them. I will put it right there, I think. What do you guys think? I think I like it. But before we do, let's tie a string through this button. Let's see. I'm going to go get some water so I can spool this end down. All right, we got some water. It's twisted nice and in taut. Um, I like this side better. I mean, this side's really pretty, but I think the side with the grooves adds to what I have going on. All right. And I'll twist it up again. Pull it tight. Pull it to the edge. Not with the water though, you can just throw that out. That way you don't waste too much string. Tie it in a knot. And another knot. And now you have a button with a little string on it. Um, sometimes I like to leave the strings dangling out on this one. I don't think that's going to be the case. I'm going to trim it flush, flush with the, excuse me, item with my little button. Okay. Get some good amount of glue going on here. Now this is where you don't have to skimp too much. I mean, I wouldn't put too much so it's not coming out, coming out your ears or coming out the side of your project here. And just glue it in place. And I have this one that I want to add next to it. Just put a nice glue drop on there. And push it right in there. Perfect. Oh my goodness. I am in love. Oh, before we forget, I actually had to go dig these out before I came back to you guys because I wasn't 100% sure where it was. Thankfully, it was easy to find. Punch our hole. 
before I forget. And now we are ready to add our string. And I think I want one. Or should I use, no, I'm gonna use this string. I'm going to use this string. Two. Alrighty. I'll just pass it through the little hole. And you can either keep the top even or uneven. I like to play with mine a little bit and keep them a little uneven on each side. Not too uneven though, just a little bit. There we go. And now we're gonna wrap it around our fingers and pull it on through. And now we have a beautiful tag ready to go with a little lamb writing card. And I'm going to write the lovely lady a note that goes in there. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I know some of you may think it's too long. And I'm sorry if you think so. But I just have so many little itty bitty things to teach that some new people may not know. Um, thanks for sticking with me. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I hope you all love this tag. Bye.